Well, hello, we want to talk about something that I know is on everybody's mind. And that is, why has God allowed this pandemic to occur in the first place? Why has he allowed the disease to run rampant around here? Why would God allow COVID-19? Why would God allow such a virus that's devastating our world? You know, the whole world seems to be asking this question. A fact that actually gives the biggest part of the answer that everybody is asking the question. Hmm, there lies your answer to some degree. So what is God's purpose in allowing COVID-19, this terrible virus? Well, without being too dramatic, we know that generally speaking, one of God's purposes in trials is to get the world's attention off themselves and onto him. He wants us to have our attention on our creator and our savior, Jesus Christ, which is the biggest part of the answer to the question at hand. The question, why would God allow COVID-19? So that the attention would come off of ourselves, which has been on ourselves for many years now. So our attention would now be, what is God up to? What is he thinking? What is he doing? You know, millions are suddenly asking the question right now, believers and non-believers alike, which means that God is on their minds. That's what he wants. God desires for all people to earnestly seek him and find him, discovering that he actually is close to us, says Jeremiah 29, 13. He wants us to know that he's here, he's with us, he's available to us. Our attention need to be on him and not on prosperity, money, and politics. You see, God desires us to sense our own weaknesses and neediness so that we put our trust in him. Read 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He wants us to trust him and not to trust ourselves so much absent of him. It's very important. And so God desires people to fear him. He wants us to reverence him with proper reverence and awe. We have stopped reverencing God. Proverbs 9, 10 talks about the fear of God or the reverencing of God is the beginning. We want, God wants us to love him more. He wants us to live differently. He wants us to show him how much we're grateful for all of the marvelous work he does. He did that for us by way of his savior. Jesus Christ came. The suffering servant says the Bible. So now he wants us to respond to his love by saying, God, forgive me. I love you. Another reason God desires to shift our focus and our affection away from his, this temporary troubled world to our eternal heavenly home. He wants us to focus in, not on earth, but on heaven. This is a temporary place. We act as if we're going to live here forever. This is just a dressing up place. And then there are times of troubles that are prime motivations for us to store up treasures in heaven rather than cling to treasures on earth. Matthew 6, 19 through 20, store up your treasures on earth. And he wants us to be a good steward of those blessings God gives us in this life. And the truth of the matter is we have not been good stewards of what God has given us. We don't even go to church and God's given us a beautiful facility. We don't even pray and God's given us a beautiful altar. We don't even read the Bible, and now we got thousands of different kinds of Bibles, and we don't carry them. And then I think God wants us to trust him absolutely, knowing that our times are in his hand. We forgot that. Our times are in his hand, not in ours. But ultimately, it is strange. The poor and the hurting who seek God not the rich and the comfortable who are seeking God. Poor folks seek God. But he just doesn't want to say poor folk. He wants to say rich as well. And so you need to understand it is a danger and calamity that turn men to their savior, not health and wealth. It is suffering that wakes us up to our true need. You've got to read the book by C.S. Lewis, uh, entitled God Whispers to Us in Our Pleasures. He speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pain. And so these troubles are a, magnifo a megaphone 
to rouse this deathly world. It is his book called The Problem of Pain, Harper Collins, 1996. And let me give you another reason. Life for all people means facing suffering, death, and their eternal destination. You see, even if we develop immunity to COVID-19, we can't escape the fact of trouble in the world. There'll be another trouble. What's best for us in any situation is for us to seek God. That's what he wants us to do. The Bible says, blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart, says the psalmist in Psalm 119 and 2. God is up to something. He's trying to build a greater relationship with us. He wants our attention. He wants us to realize this is not our home. We have a destination beyond this life and it ought to be heaven. And we've got to take God seriously. Stop playing with the blessings that he gives us. Freedom is a blessing. To be going to places and in and out of buildings is a blessing. To fellowship and love and hug on each other is a blessing. Having Sunday church is a blessing. And so God has now got our attention, or until he gets it, we will continue in this suffering world. And we will not seek prosperity. We will begin seeking his face, which is what he wants us to do. God bless you. Hope that this short meditation helped you and has caused you to turn towards our maker, creator, and God. God bless you.